Hi, I'm Mary Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Taurus for February 2018. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, see what's new on my blog, and if you would love to learn astrology, either for your personal or professional use, I would love to help you. My astrology apprenticeship program is now enrolling. If you would like to have written horoscopes for each sign that talk about a little bit of a different um, area of your chart being highlighted than these videos that I do for you, then check out my new website, CozyBySweetStarlight.com. There are also other wonderful blog headers there that I think you'll enjoy. So what's going on this month? We're still right in the middle of these powerful eclipse changes. We're moving, we're around midway through the Leo Aquarius eclipse cycle that started at the beginning of 2017 and runs well into 2019. So more chapters are closing and opening in this longer story and we've got a lot of activity now. So if you haven't already watched my January report, I highly recommend that you make a note to do that because I talk about the lunar eclipse and its effects. And the lunar eclipse happens on January 31st and will very much dominate February just as the solar eclipse that we're going to talk about in this month. So the solar eclipse happens on February 15th. It's at 27 degrees of Aquarius. Lunar eclipses tend to bring uh, fullness, completion, fruition, and make room for new things. And then the solar eclipse brings in the new things. So we're going to talk about the areas of life where there are, are higher potentials for new things to come in for you based on this eclipse cycle. So I'm calling the theme of the month for Taurus, your time to shine. And that's because most of you are experiencing this solar eclipse in the 10th house. About let's see, just the first 10 degrees or so, or the first 10 days of the sign, or zero to nine or so degrees if you're watching for your birth, um, for your ascendant, then you're going to have it happen in the 11th house. But even of that early segment, a lot of you can have the potential to have the solar eclipse effects in the 10th house. So most of you are more likely to have this 10th house experience, and you early degree placements have a little, and some of the middle degree placements have a potential to have some 11th house manifestation as well. But the predominant energy for Taurus this month is about your place out in the world. So what comes from that? Okay, and again, this is pretty much all of you have this potential here um, in this 10th house, even though not all of you are having it exactly there. The 10th house has to do with your place out in the world. It has to do with your career and your work. So one of the most easy, obvious manifestations of this could be a new job a new position within your current company or your work. It could be, if you're self-employed, a new division of your work or a new way or a new project within your work. Um, so anything having to do with new beginnings, new position, new work, it could mean that you're getting a new boss. Also, this is the area of people who you answer to. New um, rules within the, the realms that you're working in <clears throat> could also come up. So you could be um, promoted. You could be recognized. Work that you've been trying to get out there could actually come out and bring positive things for you. Um, the new moon solar eclipse is also, which we'll talk more about when we talk about the general transits, has some really beautiful aspects along with it. So it's a very energetically bright new moon. So you could have um, development in figuring out what you wanna do with your life and with your work. Um, so you can make advancements along those fronts. You could also have um, more understanding of your life purpose, what it is that you're here to do, or focus energies around finding those answers. You could have something notable go on with your father or a father figure, or you becoming an authority figure or an authority figure. There could be new projects that open up in, you know, with one of these people or in one of these divisions of life. Um, so maybe your dad's helping you or your stepdad or a father figure or, or you're helping them or you start a project with them. Those are all potentials for this transit. Or you come to peace with something that happened with father figure. There's healing that can go on. That's another potential of this transit. So anything with your, your life out in the world, new job, new opportunities, new segment of work, new division of your business, new way of doing things. Sometimes it's a very obvious manifestation like this is a new thing that is in your life. But sometimes it's more subtle, like your relationship to work could change, or your relationship to um, your career could change, or a new, a whole new career could come. You know, those are all different potentials for this 10th house that most of you will be 
experiencing. Um, there, this could also involve a move for work um, so that either you make more money and then you have money to buy a house and then you move or, um, or a bigger house or, or more expensive or something like that or the opportunity is somewhere not where your house is and you move for work. So there is some potential where a work opportunity could cause um, move or movement or some other kind of pressure on home or family meaning you're working more or something like that. But it does have a strong suggestion of accomplishment. Um, so, you know, there is that positive aspect to it. Now for you early degree placements, so again, like the first 10-ish degrees and really some of you middle degree placements. So we'll say like the first 15 degrees if you're watching for your rising sign or the first couple of weeks of the for your birthday. There is also this potential that this will manifest in the 11th house. So this can have to do with um, networking possibilities, friends showing up for you, acquaintances leading you in a right direction or bringing you opportunities. And that could mean one of these people could actually give you a job offer or a job opportunity. The, you know, the 11th and 10th house could be connected in this way. Um, you could be having new opportunities involving internet-based projects um, or technology or futuristic or new age related things. There could be a community-based project um, that you're working on or a humanitarian effort or something involving a large organization or working on a team or in groups. So something new in those arenas um, have an increased probability of showing up. And all of those things, again, could be related to your work and how you shine and bringing your work out into the world. This month is one of the best months in the whole year for bringing something very new out. You know, we'll have a wall of retrogrades that starts around March 8th, um, after March 8th, and for the rest of the year until the end of the year, we've got one or another personal planet, um, Mercury, Venus, or Mars, or their shadow period to contend with as far as trying to get new things out. So it's not that there's not going to be any room to do anything, it's just that January and February and early March hold more of the forward moving energy um, and everything else is more about old projects, going inward and backward, tides rolling in, going back to other things, fine tuning, editing, revising, you know, bringing old things back into the forefront. So for something brand new that you're trying to get out, this is one of the best months of the whole year. So these are the things that are most on my mind for Taurus. Now I want to talk about the individual transits that I think are noteworthy and what days they are, what the transits are, what you might see from those um, transits and how you can most use them and also some other patterns and themes that are occurring in the month that can assist you with using the energies in the best way. That's why I do these videos is to help you become aware of the potential so that you can most use them for your conscious evolution and making your life the best possible. So the theme for the month for February 2018 for all signs is radical new directions. This is complements of our Solar eclipse that is the highlight of this month, which takes place on February 15th, and it's at 27 degrees of Aquarius. We've been talking about these eclipses for a while. Um, first of all, because as long as they we are in an eclipse cycle, news can come in that is eclipse related. So that means from beginning of 2017 through well into 2019, movement along these Leo Aquarius fronts so anything in the Leo and Aquarian realms and anything along the houses where it's hitting for each sign can come through at any point in the eclipse cycle. It's just when the actual eclipses are happening and then the four to six, even eight weeks before, um, and in some cases after, they're like hot spots on a timeline of a story that is ongoing. So sometimes I get asked the question, can I have eclipse news come in sooner than six weeks before the actual eclipse? The answer is yes. I actually just myself um, this week had something very clearly, and I'm recording this in the middle of December, um, very clearly had a solar eclipse in February manifestation starting to come through in the middle of December. So the eclipse times and the times right before and after are hot spots where there's an increase in frequency of eclipse related news. But if you look more closely, you'll see that this story that's going on is, is in motion behind the scenes to some degree for the whole time of the eclipse cycle. So radical new directions for this period of time, we have um, major trajectory changes as a common outcome of eclipses. 
So we're remembering that an eclipse as an astronomical event takes place on one day. An eclipse as an astrological event is an ongoing um, cycle of a story. So um, we're looking for hot spots or <clears throat> major um, news or things to come through around eclipse time because the frequency and the probability is increased. So that's why around this period of time, you'll be likely having the effects of the solar eclipse. So the lunar eclipse that happened at the end of January, we're still very much in a hot spot for that. So closings, endings, completions, things coming to fruition in a big way that you've been working on. Um, those energies can still come into February, even though the highlight of the month astrologically is the new moon. So the new moon solar eclipse brings in new opportunities, new windows, new doors, new possibilities. Um, and sometimes they're in line with things you've been working on, but sometimes they seem to come out of the blue. So look for this news, but usually it won't be too hard to find. Um, but on the, at the same time, sometimes there are things going on on the more subtle levels that are only aware to the seeker, you know, if you're looking for it. You could go through an eclipse season and think, well, gosh, nothing happened at all. But if you're looking, if you're really looking, you'll definitely see at least subtle changes um, in the story that's going on. So um, there will be major impetus to move forward and the stars are right in general for new directions because we don't have any personal planets retrograde this month of February. But at the same time, I describe a lot of what else is going on in February as mischievous. You know, there's there are aspects that can definitely serve as hindrances to moving forward. So while I'm giving you the report about this green light for moving forward, if you're intuitively not feeling like you should say yes to something or that you should do something, then you have to honor that. And there might be reality checks or things to make you look um, or dig deeper throughout this month. And we'll go into more details about each of those aspects and what days they are and what they can bring, but just to kind of understand this month better. Green lights on for moving forward, but lots of hindrances that could bring hesitation or doubt. There could be something very clearly that you're supposed to say yes to, but that yes can also still have uncertainty where it's awkward and it's new and you're not sure or you're scared, but still you have a clear yes. One of the most important things to figure out this month, really, really imperative, to tell the difference between self-sabotaging reluctance and, which comes from fear, which would require some use of will to push through, and an actual just intuitive push saying, no, it's not time. So the, the resistance to change is going to be very strong at this time, just as the possibility for change is standing there. So you really, really have to tune in and figure out, are you not moving forward because intuitively you're supposed to hold off because maybe the retrogrades for the rest of the year are going to change what you would have done or would have launched? Or is it something you have to push through? You know, and only you can know the answer to that. So besides the eclipse, we've got tons of energy in Aquarius besides the, the new moon and solar eclipse. We've got lots of planets moving through that sign. So the Aquarian realms will be lit up in major ways. So anything that involves teaching, leading, or participating in groups, anything that has to do with friendships or um, social media or social circles, involvement with humanitarian efforts, connections with or working for large organizations. Um, it also has to do with anything that has to do with the internet um, or internet-based projects or technology or futuristic thinking, um, patents and things like that. You could see a lot of activity in your friend realm, you know, friends coming in, friends leaving, drama with friends, opportunities with friends, networking possibilities. Whenever the planets are in, Aquari are in Aquarius, it's usually a pretty good time to be networking in some way. So just feel into how that could be appropriate for you. So towards the end of the month, we've got the planets starting to move into Pisces and that brings a totally different feel. This is the um, Pisces, rules the domain of the intuitive, of the introspective, of the artistic, of the abstract, of the romantic, of the poetic. So we move um, at some point 
um, in the month, about three quarters of the way through, it starts to get more leaning towards the Pisces energy. But we move from this mental air sign of Aquarius and air energy of thinking um, to feeling. So I'm going to talk about um, the individual transits, the dates that they're going to happen, and things that I think are important for you to know to best utilize them. If you'd like a written report of what I'm explaining here in this general transit, then you can sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com. When you sign up at AnnieHelpsYou.com, you get my monthly newsletter a month early so that you can see the dates and the energies at play written and not just in the video version. So on February 3rd, we have Mercury in Aquarius making a 60 degree angle to Mars and Sagittarius. This is a very favorable angle. So the good vibes are easy flowing now as these two very easy going um, signs are getting together in a great aspect. So this is a great time for dreaming big and expressing ideas in a big way. At the same time, and you can see what I mean about this mischievousness, in January, if you're watching this early, then you can, you can understand what I'm talking about from being in the energy of January. Um, but January has a lot of green lights to move forward with less of the mischievous hindrances. February has lots of green lights and, um, and energy for going forward, but at the same time, it has these hindrances that I talked about. And here's a good example of this. So on February 3rd through the 4th, we have Venus in Aquarius making a square to Jupiter in Scorpio. We have three squares with personal planets to Jupiter this month. And that is part of what's making this theme where Jupiter is trying to expand something, but the square formation is causing a block or causing something to push through or causing questions or causing stop, you know, stopping. So freedom and commitment may come into conflict at this time. The aspect can also bring challenges to love, money, or expression. Um, and it is important to note, though, that even though it will show up, these blocks will show up, they're also with Jupiter, and Jupiter is known as the Great Benefic. So any difficult angle to this planet tends to be softer than the difficult angles to other planets. So we have that going for us this month. On February 6th, we have another beautiful aspect, Venus in Aquarius making a 60 degree angle to Uranus in Aries. So we can have boosts to social life, love life, finances, artistic expression. This is a great aspect for making money decisions or launching something new in business or love. So whenever we've got, you know, kind of these thumbs up, thumbs down energies that are rolling around each other as they tend to be, you sort of just have to feel your way through it because I give you the date of February 6th that this aspect is happening, but you could feel this aspect and a green light days before or even after because the expression of the aspect doesn't just happen on that day for most of these aspects. So, you know, you just kind of have to know what's going on and then feel your way around and look for your own intuitive push for your striking points. On February 10th, we have um, a second square with Jupiter. The Sun in Aquarius is squaring Jupiter in Scorpio. So this comes with a tendency to overdo. So here I am telling you, try to get everything you can done this month, right? Because the wall of retrogrades starting March 8th is going to descend upon us very quickly. So yes, it's true. We do want to do a lot this month. And yes, it's true that a transit like this could cause us to overdo um, and become tired or um, become frazzled. So it can also cause us to um, overpromise. So definitely look out around this time for um, the opportunity to be conservative with your commitments because you may be trying big, but if you scale down what you promise compared to what you're intending, then you won't have the stress of trying to pull through something that might not ever get up to the level that you promised. Something else important that I wanna note um, that's happening in March, but is relevant for now, is that on that same day that our personal planet retrograde um, absence stops, so basically we are free from personal planets being retrograde and their shadow periods until March 8th. Then we start to descend into Mercury retrograde, then we'll go into Mars retrograde, then we'll go into Mercury retrograde, then we'll go into Venus retrograde. Um, but on March 8th, Jupiter also goes retrograde. And Jupiter is our green light planet. It's our go, go, go expansion, optimism planet. So even though this is 
extra relevant for Sages, it's relevant for everybody trying to do anything. So this is another reason if you feel on if the intuition feels on board for pushing forward this month to really just push through and do extra work this month because you want to get your projects out before Jupiter goes retrograde and it will be retrograde for several like three to four months. So February 13th, there is um, our third square to Jupiter, and this is in the form of Mercury and Aquarius making a square to Jupiter. So these energies can uh, combine can bring difficulty and concentration, which is even more challenging because this is a time when Mercury is squaring Jupiter. It's a time when the universe is asking you to pay more attention to the details that are involved in your big pro your big vision projects. So just at the time that you have to pay more attention to the details, you have a challenge in concentrating on the details. So it would be a good time to enlist some help with people who are really good at that um, or just some extra eyes to support you. This can also come with a tendency to overestimate your capacity to follow through with something you're promising. So you can see this trend whenever anything is squaring Jupiter, there is a tendency to um, overpromise. On the same day, February 13th, and you notice that all of this is going on around the um, Valentine's Day time, we have a mitigating awesome transit with the Sun in Aquarius making a very favorable angle to Uranus. So there is a little bit of dicey energy around um, Valentine's Day, but there is also some very supportive energy around Valentine's Day. So um, this Sun aspect with Uranus can bring progressive solutions. It can also bring internet-based projects and community-minding plans to move forward. Um, group or team focus expands in a wonderful way. If you're looking for a time to try to, um, you know, pop the question, I still think that there's a lot of good energy around this time. Um, and this aspect can be very supportive because Uranus is future thinking. And of course, when you're getting married or trying to move forward on any project, we're thinking about the future. So there is lots of good energy around um, moving forward. Just kind of feel your way through it. And if you're planning to pop the question and it doesn't um, feel right, then give it a, a day or something. You might feel the energies even after a couple of hours shift. So just feel your way through this. On February 15th, we also have the new moon in Aquarius. And this is an amazing energy for new things. It's also the solar eclipse. In general, I try to space things away from the exact day of the solar eclipse, which is on the 15th, because that carries a specific intensity with it. But you'll see radical new directions opening up from this eclipse um, and this magical aspect also has additional support from the planets because mercury is making a 60 degree angle to uranus and it can enhance communication um, and expression and also find futuristic resolutions as we just discussed um, it also can um, bring positive outcomes from so basically a solution for an old problem something that's been going on for a while you can figure out a solution for that, or the odds are more likely. Also, Venus in Pisces is making a nice angle to Saturn and Sag, and this can help bring abstract ideas into form in wonderful ways. So there's a massive amount of energy around this new moon that is really supportive for moving forward. On February 17th, we also have the Sun in Aquarius making a conjunction to Mercury in Aquarius. So your mental powers will expand at this time, the capacity to intellectualize, to brainstorm. Um, and again, community-based projects, internet projects, anything Aquarian related can get a boost, social media, etc. On February 21st, you can see these energies are very quickly moving into this feeling energy. Venus in Pisces is making a conjunction to Neptune in Pisces. So boundaries can tend to blur during this transit for better and worse. Romance can flourish at this time. Um, emotional spending is more likely, but it can be worthwhile if you're clear enough. If you feel clear enough to make good decisions, you could get some things that really add to the beauty um, and emotional substance of your life. And by the way, this whole month is really great in general for making important purchases. If you feel your way through and, and it feels like it's the right move for you. Phones, um, cars, making decisions, starting programs, um, you know, launching, anything. This is one of the best months of the year for pushing things forward in a big way. Um, so you definitely want to take advantage of that. Something else that is great at this transit on the 21st with Venus and Neptune is it's wonderful for artists and art related projects. So on the 25th, we have Venus in Pisces squaring Mars in Sag. So 
This can be a little bit of a bummer. Emotional longing may be met with emotionless and detached reflections, okay, um, which doesn't usually feel good. But this is a really good time to remember that the only constant that we can trust is our connection with spirit, with spirit and not the fickleness of the material realms, you know? So when we have a transit like this that can be a little bit disappointing or a little bit confusing, it serves to fuel our spiritual work in the way that whenever we put our dependence and happiness in something outside of ourselves in an ever-changing world, you know, we're on a, a planet that's moving, that's spinning, but it's also moving, and then it's also moving within that moving, and then it's in a solar system that's moving, in a universe that's moving, you know? Everything is moving. So the only thing that's constant is our connection to spirit, that all that is. And this is an amazing um, transit to reiterate that into our being and to be able to find happiness beyond what our circumstances are. At this same time, we have Mercury and Pisces making a conjunction with Neptune. So this combination can be amazing for romance and emotional connections. Um, alternatively, and especially because of the square that is also happening this day, it can cause confusion or deception. Um, so just again, tune in and trust your gut feelings in deeper ways. On the same day, the 25th, this is a very powerful time in the cosmos, lots going on. We've got the Sun in Pisces making a beautiful aspect to Saturn in Capricorn, which is a, a great time for abstract ideas taking shape beautifully and rough edges being softened with great outcomes. You know, whenever we have energies of water and energies of earth coming together in a beautiful aspect, it gives us the opportunity to blend art and function. On the 27th, we have an awesome aspect with Venus in Pisces making a 60 degree angle to Pluto in Capricorn. Um, I want to take a second now to note, you've noticed I've said 60 degree angle quite a few times in this report. That means that there is a strong story of this 60 degree angle. And 60 degree angles are positive, supportive aspects, but they usually involve you having to take action on something. They're a little bit different than a trine. Trines tend to just bring things in. And yes, you can take action on those beautiful aspects also, but this 60 degree angle really wants you to do something. And the way I always describe this is like, let's say you want a peach pie, right? And you have all the ingredients for the pie on your counter and then you're like, why don't I have a peach pie? Everything is there, right? Well, you have to use the ingredients to make the pie. So you might have to do something active with these 60 degree angles to be able to get the better aspect, um, but they're full of opportunities. So on the 27th, we've got this Venus in Pisces, 60 degree angle to Pluto and Capricorn. So you, again, you see this theme of artistic flow receiving great support tangible support, material support, look for ways to bring intuition and practicality together. So you've heard me say something like that a few times, and that's because of this blending of water energies and earth energies as a, um, as a little bit of a um, pattern this month. On the 28th, we have Mercury and Pisces making a square to Mars and Sag. So be on guard for misunderstandings at this time. Unclear communications can bring challenges and conflicts. And it may be hard to express feelings at this time, or it could just be that deadlines could create creativity blocks. You know, Mars and Sag wants to go, go, go and be everywhere at the same time and do everything at the same time. But Mercury and Pisces is more of a slower, emotional, um, quiet, um, soft moving uh, energy, you know? So whenever those two conflicting energies come in, you can see there might be some conflicts there. Also on February 28th, we have a beautiful aspect with Mercury and Pisces making a 60 degree angle with Pluto and Capricorn. So compassionate communication can result in great strides at this time. Um, so adding art to function is a great way to use this energy also. I love the book, uh, Marshall Rosenberg's book, Nonviolent Communication for everything for always. But when we have aspects um, or combinations like this where there's so much softness and feeling um, coming into uh, connection with a different type of energy, you know, the more we can tune in and really put ourselves in the place of someone that we're communicating with and look at it from their perspective, there's a tremendous amount of healing that can occur with that. 
So these are the things that are most on my mind this month for the general transits. Definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, see what's new in my blogs. Um, also, um, sign up for my free email newsletter to get your monthly write-up and more. Definitely go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com to get your written monthly horoscope for each sign. That's something new that I've never done before, but I am doing it on my new site, Cozy by Sweet Starlight, along with great reads for each sign and lots of blog headers um, for your comfy, cozy uh, life, astrology kissed life. Then check out my husband, B.R. Newman's tarot scopes to get more information about what could be in store for you at iamhelios.com, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com. So I hope you have a wonderful month. Check out my astrology apprenticeship program if you would love to learn astrology with me, and I'll see you next month.